Um, dear participants and hosts, um, I'll be presenting on antimalarial drugs inventory among urban and rural patent medicine vendors. Um, this study was conducted in Akwaibom State, Nigeria, where we looked at the stocking and dispensing profiles of patent medicine vendors. Uh, my presentation outline, I will look at the background, I will look at the methodology, I will share the results, and of course, the conclusion and recommendations we made. As part of the background, in 2015, um, World Malaria Report showed 429,000 deaths, and 92% of these deaths occurred in Sub-Saharan Africa. And of course, as we can see, 303,000 of these deaths were really children under five. Uh, Nigerian and uh, interestingly, Nigeria and uh, DRC accounted for more than 36% of, of these deaths. Uh, and this, uh, this shows the high burden of uh, malaria in this country. So if we're going to achieve the sustainable development goals, that is very important for Nigeria and DRC to really address the issues and deaths related to malaria. Our patent, patent medicine vendors are registered and unregistered shop owners. Some of them actually hawk their drugs along the roads and homes, and they're also everywhere and they're readily available to sell their drugs. They dominated, they dominated the unregula unregulated and informal sector of Nigeria anti-malaria drug and very important to malaria interventions. They are profit driven and that also shows what motivates them in doing their business. So our research question in, is to look at the importance of their Sorry, can the patent medicine vendors promote access to appropriate anti-malaria drugs for treatment of uncomplicated malaria? Why the second question looks at what are the determinants of anti-malaria drug stocking and dispensing of practices of urban and rural based patent medicine vendors. So we'll be looking at patent medicine vendors who are based in the rural and those also who are based in the urban. Our study objectives, the broad objective included um, the, to identify anti-malaria drugs that are stocked by patent medicine vendors and what are the client prefer preferences of these drugs as um, in this state of Nigeria that we selected for the study. And then the specific objective of the study will include determining the active ingredients of the anti-malaria drugs that are sold by the patent medicine vendors so that we'll be able to analyze which of these active ingredient drugs are the part of the drug that are sold higher or preferred by the clients and then determine the cost of antimalaria drugs that are sold by patent medicine vendors as well as look at the availability of these drugs since we know that patent medicine vendors are profit driven so what are the things that motivate them to ensure that the type of drug they stock and what they sell to their clients in the metal section the study was a cross-sectional survey and we surveyed 120 patent medicine vendors in 10 selected local government areas of Akwai Bomb State. The local government has about 31 LGAs. So what we did was the five LGAs were blindly drawn from each arm and 12 patent medicine vendors were purposely selected from each LGA among the registered and unregistered patent medicine vendors. Uh, we have a one-page questionnaire that was used. used to elicit information and information elicited was on brand brand names of active uh, antimalaria drugs that were stopped by patent medicine vendors. We also looked at the terminals of uh, antimalaria drugs, the stocking and dispensing practices that include antimalaria drugs active ingredients, cost, availability, popularity among clients and then recommendation among shop owners and health providers. So we, it is important to mention here that some of the patent medicine vendors will find them also to be health providers, uh, those who have already also retired and also who are practicing this as to earn a living. So data collection was carried out by five trained data collectors on the use of the questionnaire and each patent medicine vendor was visited by a data collector and requested to bring out all antimalarial drugs in the shop after explaining the purpose of the study and obtaining uh, consent. The essence of doing this is to make sure that active ingredients that are written on the packet of the drugs were being captured by the data collector. So data was entered into SPSS 17 series, cleansed and computed while results are presented in simple frequencies, percentages, confidence intervals, mean and figures. 
The standard market determinant measured included brand names, drug based by active ingredients. We looked at cost and we looked at availability, precision pattern, and then disaggregated this by urban and rural, as I mentioned earlier. So the result outcome, uh, while well, it appears that our results were not loaded. Hello? I can't find my results here. Well, my result outcome actually, my result outcome actually showed that um, despite the fact that at Muslim based combination therapy was about 71% um, in the urban, but in the ruler it was more of subdosing prometamine and chloroquine. Um, this demonstrates that since 2005, when Nigeria changed, when Nigeria changed uh, the first line drug change to uh, the use of antimicillin combination therapy still chloroquine and chloroquine and um, subdosing prematamine that are no longer recommended for treatment still share a part of the nigerian market uh, also we will find that the cost of drugs range from 35 naira to 1850 uh, chloroquine and sp subdosing prematamine cost least um, this actually shows that in the rural area, people are buying more of least cost drugs because of the poverty in the rural area. So what, what that shows is that if the patent medicine vendors continue to stock these drugs that are no longer recommended for treatment, then we have really problems to deal as far as malaria uh, elimination is concerned in Nigeria. The children formulation drugs also cost cheaper when we compare to ACT in the urban area. And this is also a demonstration of the fact that we know that children are more prone to malaria. So we have more of unrecommended drugs being used for treatment of children. And that also has consequences in the malaria interventions we do in country. And like I mentioned, 26% of the market share is still being dominated by uh, subdosine and uh, chloroquine, even in the urban market. And this is very interesting. And I think we really need to do something by repositioning the patent medicine vendors to stock more, more appropriate drugs that have been recommended for malaria treatment, especially the uncomplicated case, uh, uncomplicated, uncomplicated case management of malaria. Furthermore, uh, we may have to assign specific rules to patent medicine vendors by engaging them through participatory approach and ensuring that only drugs that are recommended for, for prevention of malaria, sorry, for treatment of malaria are being sold in the Nigerian market. Uh, thank you very much for listening.